Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Pine Leaf on Board, where we are taking another look of Tales of Candlekeep, the Tomb of Annihilation. Last time we ran through the first main quest in the series, the Favor for Jessamine, and today we are going to head out to do some heads trimming. Since the last episode, I received my copy of the board game, and there I looked through the adventures, and the 12 adventures that are after the tutorial do match adventures that are in the board game. The tutorial is not in the board game. The favor for Jasmine is the first. They do not implement in this video game one called The Lost Boy, it looks like a rather complicated escort quest, and I think that they had no good way of implementing it. So they decided to leave it out. Maybe if they do figure it out at some point, they could add it as a side quest or something like that. But as far as I know, they were not able to implement it, so they decided to leave it out of the campaign. But now, uh, let's head into some heads trimming. Uh, we will do this on normal and start our quest. And we are going to go in with a Dragon Bait, which is the hero that I like using the most. So let's go in. See that skull or demon mask? When you see this icon, don't turn off your computer or quit the game because apparently that's the loading and saving indicator. And nasty things would happen. Jasmine did not give us much detail, but the glimmer in her eyes hints that she might already be onto something. Until then, let's complete the task she gave us. The task she gave us is to deal with the Veggie Pygmy Chief, where we could find at the village tile. So, one of the things I'd like to do is to find out what are some of the differences between the video game and the board game. Now, we're starting off with two adrenaline here which is the equivalent of XP to help us get rid of encounters. So that's something they give us for an edge. But I've noticed there are a couple of things they do in order to balance that out with. So it's not all in our favor on the changes. So let's see what our first tile is. Our first tile is a chest. Now this is a good place for our bird warrior to go and check things out, but she's not here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger a trap and explore here and open that chest. And fortunately, it looks like there was nothing in that. Oh, I didn't open the chest! Oh! <laughs> yeah, that was stupid. All right, I didn't open the chest because the entire point for going there was to open the chest. Shatter tree, nothing, so let's go ahead. Alright, well, now fortunately I can get rid of disadvantage on this character. Well, let's see if I can hit this thing. Shouldn't have too much trouble hitting a raptor. See, this is the one of fireballs. Oh, so I have a ranged attack if I'm pressed for one. But for now, I'll just use my ring of protection. While in my inventory, I gain plus two to my armor class. Well, I can't argue with that. Let's see what's next. Now, on the board game, this particular quest is designed for two to four characters. The mushroom one is the only one that is really designed for one. So that's another thing they did. They balanced it so that you could conceivably do all of the quests with one character. At least, that's the impression I'm given. Uh, this now acts as an ally in a way. The straw man for the hero for the purposes of monster behaviors. Yes, yeah, so it treats as a hero then. And challenge tile. Attack each hero within one tile of the active hero. That would be the straw man. So it'll attack me and the straw man. Mm. For the fighting insects. I think that one's not too bad, so I'll just let that one go through. Oh, 
Oh, but I do get hit by that thing. Now... Yeah, right. So much for that. Now I'll go here next. Now one of the things they changed is that... Well, you could look at monster sets. Unfortunately, I'm killing the monster so fast so that it hasn't mattered. I really should check this. Uh, let's see. A random spell is cast on the tile of the active hero. Hmm. Let's get rid of that one. Now, let's see. Where do I want to go? I want to go up here next because I don't feel like going through tempting fate and going through that trap. And there are traps there. This is the only one. The, the yellow one is the one where it will cost me two in order to go there. And I. You know, I could have actually gone to the one with two without any trouble because it's not like I can actually do any other actions at this moment. Let me make sure there is nothing I can do here. No. I want to see if I have any utilities I can use. I mean, I could get rid of the next monster spawn or something like that, but I want to save that for when I'm getting overwhelmed. There ain't nothing there. Boy, things are quiet today. And next here. Now, one of the things to see is how well we follow it on how the game proceeds. Because on most adventures, it's 9 to 13 tiles before you find the target location. There are some encounters, at least in some of the earlier games, that could cause extra tiles to come in that don't count against that. I don't know how that works in the video version. Ouch! That's Marts! Well then, you die for that. And Bracers of Defense. By inventory, get plus two to armor class. Ooh, and they stack because now I'm at 21 armor class. Okay. All right, you found the Veggie Pig Veggie Pygmy Village. If you defeat the Chieftain, the other Veggie Pygmies should clear out of the area on their own. Now, I think that was fewer than eight tiles that I drew in order to get there. So that means that it's not eight to nine tiles for this particular run. The other thing I noticed that's different from the board game is that the village was done as a four tile set. In the board game, the village is only one tile. So they decided to enhance the size of some of the target locations. And he likes to summon friends. Yeah. And they like missing me. Alright, so therefore I want to try to kill this guy as fast as possible. That's the object. Now... You can look at his stats by hitting this sign right here, or actually not hitting, just hovering over it. It gives you the information you need. This was something added in a recent patch, which is thankfully there because I was getting annoyed with. Now, with only one player, it didn't matter. We could have just uh, clicked this guy and we've gotten the same information. But in multiplayer, or I should say multi-character, this is very important because let's see what we've got here. We've got... 13 AC there, and it tells what he does is that all the veggie pity in play activate as well whenever he does. That sort of uh, little chain, that's a little thing that is even in the board game to say he takes over all the veggie pig pygmies that are in play, and he moves to the nearest hero to attack them and runs away, which is really annoying, and he calls for reinforcements if there are fewer than three in play. So, he really shouldn't do both of them. He should do one or the other. But in here, that's one of the ways of making it tougher, I guess, is by having him do both. He has only five hit points, which is fewer than in the board game. So, they give him fewer hit points, but they give him a larger tile, which makes him more annoying. And it allows him to both summon and attack in the same turn. 
So therefore, he's both buffed and nerfed a little bit to compensate for one another. Now we've got... He's only got five hit points. Let's see, what can I do? Can I do anything to get him... Well, I suppose... Choose a tile, one tile away from your hero. Yeah, well... Alright, let's see what he does. I am done now. And so... Oh, yes. Explore. This. And... How do I get there? Oh, because I go through here, there. I think they're being light on me, allowing me to go there and there, because between the rock and the monster, I would think I wouldn't be able to do that. But... Ah! It has to be going through the traps, that's why. Yeah. Well... Good. Well, and he summons his third one because there are he he has up to three that he can have. Stun the active hero for the assassin divine. Well, I can undo the stun. Ouch. Missed. Well, I got an armor class of twenty one, so they're not going to hit too often. Because what are their pluses? Plus four attack. Yeah, that they need a 17 or higher just to hit me. And this should take care of the veggie. Veggie pygmy. Boy, I don't want to say that one five times fast. Yeah. Great. You've made quick work of the chieftain. This will surely drive them back for a while. Let's go back to Jasmine and hear what she has in store for us. Well, that was pretty quick. Now, it could be because it's a video game. They decided to make some of the adventures a little bit faster. So, therefore, 9 to 13 might have been thought to be a bit much for one. This, but since I didn't open that chest, I only get the three for finishing the adventure. And I get that. Level up. A new hero slot and an extra chest. And there we have it. Oh, I explored nine tiles. Oh, I explored more tiles than I thought. Now, one of them was after finding the village. So therefore, I found the village in eight tiles. It just went faster than I thought. All right. So it looks like it, it could unlock as soon as eight instead of necessarily waiting for nine. But all right. So therefore, it's just it's a quick adventure, single character. And you get through. So let's go back to the map. And we unlock another adventure. The Great Ape. Ooh, that's a real fun one. What I want to do though is I want to look at a couple of the side quests to show what they are look like. These are quests that were added for this game. They are not in the board game. All these that are in blue. So we could have a look at some of those. And also next time, since we have managed to unlock another slot, we could try it with two characters. And so far, running it with two has been my favorite way. So we are going to run it with a Dragon Bait and with Ashara here. And I think that's a real nice combination. Where Ashara goes for the chest using her flight ability, Dragon Bait handling the bulk of the fighting with his 21 AC and 10 hit hit points is really nice but that's what we'll do in our next episode of Pineleaf on Board Tales of Candle Heat Tomb of Annihilation